Hi, for those who don't know me, uh, this is Ryan Martin, and I've got a little collection of clips here I wanted to share with everybody. Uh, this video is about different styles of uh, collegiate shag, uh, the double rhythm version. And uh, though it's intended for intermediate students, I'm hoping that some of my fellow shag enthusiast friends out there might enjoy this as well. Uh, we're going to start off with the four shag couples from the Arthur Murray video. Uh, most people are familiar with this. Though not all of the couples are doing shag basics, um, what they are doing has had a great influence on people's dancing these days, so I thought we might review that. Now, Tracy and I consider this to actually be a basic. I know a lot of people these days um, just think of this as a move called jig kicks. We've got couple number two. These guys aren't really doing a basic at all, but this is a highly influential little sequence here that's come to be known as stompers. And then we got couple number three here. Notice that the lead and the follower are not necessarily doing the same thing here. The lead's hooking his legs behind him, which is what I'm most interested in pointing out here. And then you got couple number four, which though they're not actually doing a basic, uh, this is Tom Gallagher, and he's also had a great deal of influence on Shag today. So now we're going to move on to our first basic. These are arbitrarily named, by the way. Basic number one is modeled after couple number one. Uh, call this the Jig Kick Basic. Not to be confused with Jig Trot, which is a dance that originated in Southern California, a form of single Shag. Here's a clip from another vintage source. Okay, next we're going to move on to basic number two, pretty famous, the Arthur Murray basic. I'll show Arthur Murray himself here first. Notice he sort of shifts side to side when he's doing this. He's a little bit further away from his partner and his arm is not up in the air like in traditional shag. Here's Jeremy, Ott, and Laura Keat doing it. So there's a very popular contemporary uh, interpretation, or at least what I take to be a contemporary interpretation of the Arthur Murray Basic, uh, which involves using the stabs, as we call them, or toe taps, that you see with couple number two, and adding those to the Arthur Murray Basic. If you take this, couple number two, and add it to this, Arthur Murray, you get this. This is Minvo and Krina Acosta. And one of the things that you'll notice is that that side to side motion that you see Arthur Murray doing. Um, this has both fans and opponents, uh, but I think it deserves a little bit of coverage. So we're going to stop here for a minute uh, at basic number two and talk about lilting. That's the name that's been given to this side to side phenomenon. Uh, it was stolen, the name was borrowed, <laughs> I should say, from Balboa, uh, where lilting is a very different thing. So in shag, lilt is sort of like a tilting or scooping motion to the sides. It's supposed to be just your body's natural motion back and forth as you shift your weight while doing the basic. So I put together here a little um, demo. I know I'm pointing at the ground outside of my, my feet. Those are the spots where my planted foot is going to shift ever so slightly, about an inch, to the left and to the right as I do my slows. Now here's Arthur Murray doing it. Notice his feet shift or shuffle just very slightly, about an inch. Here's me doing it again with one of our students, Heather Kaplan. Now this is the more popular uh, version of lilting and in my experience it seems to be the more natural and easier way to do it. Um, I'm not experienced enough with the other kind, uh, which I'll call inside lilt. Uh, the kind I just showed you will call that outside lilt. I'm not experienced enough with inside lilt really to say for sure that um, it's easier or harder or whatever, but it sure seems harder to me. Uh, so here's an example of me in that very same hallway in my house. Now I'm going to point at the ground. This is the ideal spot where my foot should go, my planted foot. And you'll see me doing this. Because I don't have a partner, I'm actually cheating. I'm holding on to the walls on either side of me. But you get the idea here. Here's a vintage example from the Harvest Moon footage. And here's me attempting it, <laughs> giving it my best go 
with Heather Kaplan again. She seems to be doing a little bit better at it. And one of the things that you'll notice uh, with this type of, with these two different lilts is that um, at least one of the things that, that I think I see when I'm looking at them is that when you're doing the outside lilt, the hand doesn't, the, the shag arm doesn't move as much. But when you're doing the inside lilt, the upper body shifts back and forth a little bit more, um, sort of like you're waving. <laughs> okay, enough about that. We'll now move on to basic number three. This is what Tracy and I call the hook basic. So we're going to show the couple again. Notice the lead, the way he hooks his feet back. If you refine this, you get Johnny Lee's basic, which impressed the hell out of me when I first saw it. I didn't know quite how he did that. Later on, a friend of mine, Johnny Serrano, one of the other shag, collegiate shag instructors here in Austin, um, figured it out. He said basically what it looks like they're doing, uh, including Johnny Lee, is that they're, they're doing what Marcus and Barbel call kick pulls rather than pull kicks. So this is me doing kick pulls that same hallway. Notice my foot moves forward just a little bit and then I pull my foot back, or I pull my heel back. So to explain this, most of the time when we do our shag basics, um, like the regular Arthur Murray basic, on one, you pull back your left or right foot, depending upon your, whether you're a leader or follow. Um, and on two, you tap or you just hold, right, and pulse on your planted foot. Well, the difference here with this basic, um, the tricky part is that you're actually kicking forward first on the one, pulling back, and then replacing on three, then doing the same thing, and then a quick. So well, now we'll move on to basic number four. This basic was uh, popularized, I believe, by Tom Gallagher. He taught um, Lance Benishek uh, how to do his basic and you'll notice that there's no lilt in it and it has influenced a great number of people today in the shy community a lot of people do this basic so here we are basic number four the Tom Gallagher basic or heels up basic now he's not doing the basic here but that's Tom Gallagher here's Lance Beneshek his student and here's Bill and Shannon Shannon learned a thing or two from Lance uh, she was sort of his protege here's Jeremy Ott and Laura Keat So the heels up basic or the Tom Gallagher basic doesn't have any lilting in it. Um, there's pros and cons to lilting. Uh, lilting helps leads and follows to stay in sync. The follow can tell what count the lead is on uh, based on his body motion, that sort of swaying side to side. Uh, by not lilting though, using basics like the Tom Gallagher basic, uh, it frees up the partner's ability to do footwork independently of one another. So they can still stay in the same rhythm, but throw in like scissors or other types of special footwork without interrupting their partner. Now we're going to move on to basic number five. This was popularized by Connie Wydell in Los Angeles. Uh, from what I've heard from Peter Loggins, he's from, actually he was from Minnesota and moved to Los Angeles in 1936, introduced people there to double shag. Here is Connie Waddell and his partner. Notice he lifts his, or they lift their legs up and kick out to the side very slightly. It's very easy to exaggerate this uh, basic. Here's another LA couple and yet another one, Christofferson's. So notice that what they're doing here, all three of these couples are not doing what you see here. This is Ray Hirsch and Patty Lacey doing what's come to be known as the sailor basic. And they're not doing this either. This is even more exaggerated. I'm not sure if this is sailor basic or something else. So here's Connie again. Notice his back is straight. Right, so that's the difference. Um, it's important to make a distinction there. The, the sailor basic, uh, a lot of people consider to just be something that you throw in um, as a stylization, like the music tells you to do it. Um, it's something that you might do during a performance or something. So. Now we're going to move to what Tracy and I call basic number six. Um, I'm not really sure where the origins of this basic lie. We first learned it from Marcus and Barbel from watching their DVD series. Uh, and if I haven't mentioned it already, I highly recommend their DVDs. It's sort of like a, 
uh, an encyclopedia of shag moves. They, I think they had Lance in L.A. with them and filmed for several days and, and learned a bunch of stuff from him. Anyway, it's great stuff. So here we go. This is basic number six. Tracy and I call this the lift basic. Here's uh, Marcus and Barbel doing it. They were just calling it the hot basic in their video. And finally, here's a vintage example that I've put on loop. Notice the lead here is doing the lift basic. This is taken from Artie Shaw's Symphony of Swing. All right, so that's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope that you can take something away from this. There's a lot of different ways to do shag, a lot of different foot stylizations and technique and stuff like that. These are, I believe, um, the primary ways that people are doing shag these days. And I hope that you can take some stuff out of this and develop your own style and uh, enjoy your shag and share it with other people. All right, thank you very much.